Hello everyone, in today's command tutorial, we're going to be taking a look at parasite operations and loadouts. Now this is something that I probably should have made as a video way, way, way back when I was making the absolute basic videos, but I finally got a chance to go around to it, and I remember to do it, more importantly. So what is a parasite unit? Basically, that's going to be a unit that it shares another base or naval vessel or something along those lines. In command, there are two basic types of parasite units. The first being the aircraft type, which you're probably very familiar with. Anything that can carry aircraft is going to have this little symbol up in the bottom right corner to indicate that it is. The second type of parasite will be any type of ship. Now, this is where it gets actually a little bit interesting. You have ports in command. You know, if you just select a generic port and you see the little icon in the corner, that simply says that this particular port has ships at it. But what you're also going to notice is certain ships have the ability to carry other ships. It's kind of like a shipception sort of thing. Each one of these menus is going to be accessed in a slightly different way. If you're dealing with just ships, simply select the unit, such as a port or a ship that has naval units inside of it, and you can come up here and you can click on the boats option right there. The other option, of course, is you can press F7, or for those of you who are inclined, you can go up to boat operations. When you open this window, you're going to get a list of all the different ships that are located at that particular location. Remember, these are at port. So in the event that an enemy shows up with some bombers and starts attacking this particular port, these ships will be damaged as a result. A couple of neat things to kind of keep an eye out for. Uh, first thing you're going to notice is it's going to tell you if it's damaged. It's going to tell you what weapons. You can actually click on it and get details. And remember, a ship in port is being constantly reloaded. So the key thing you want to know about this particular screen is that if you select the unit and click launch individually, it'll automatically start start deploying from this port and then start going out to sea just a little bit. Keep in mind when you do this, it takes about 15 minutes between the moment you say go and the moment the ship actually can get out of port. The option that you can do as well is if you shift click more than one unit at a time, you can actually launch them as a group, or if you prefer, you can launch them all individually as well. This is a pretty slick trick because you can use this to group ships into things that you would normally group them into. It's also worth noting there's an abort button. Uh, once they start launching, if you click abort, they stay in the ground. There's a doctrine option in the event that you want to basically dial them into any of the ships that I'm launching, I don't want to launch SAMs from. And of course, you can come down here and you can also assign them to missions as well. Keep in mind, any ship that is at a dock is automatically going to be refueled and rearmed unless, if you were to take a look at the Doctrine page and go to Withdraw and Redeploy, you can go ahead and dial this in a little bit more specifically should you need to. So that's it for ships. Keep in mind, if you have something like this LHA, the Tarawa over here, if you were to bring up that same menu, the only big difference here is you're going to have a little bit less because, again, these are little tiny LCMs, so nothing too, too fancy. And again, if you're in a cargo mission, you actually have this option down here to load and unload cargo into these ships individually. I actually recommend that you do that with a mission because it's going to be a little less micromanagey, especially when you have like 600 when you're doing an entire amphibious landing or something crazy like that. So that's it for ships. It's relatively straightforward. Again, it's not going to be too complicated. Let's take a look at aircraft. All right, this is where it's going to get a little bit more fun. So I have Honolulu International here. Uh, when I left click on it, you'll notice that this is not a single unit airfield. It is actually made up of tons and tons of little pieces all going around here. So to, you'll notice that it has this little icon here that tells me I'm carrying aircraft. Keep in mind, you can have a combination port airport if you really want to make yourself crazy. You'll also notice that when I select it, it'll actually mark where the individual aircraft are located throughout the base. This is actually really cool because when you order an aircraft to move, you can actually see it move along these different items to get to the main runway that it's going to be using to take off from. It's a really slick trick and um, there's one extra thing you can do here too for those of you who are mission designers. You can actually switch to individual mode, select one of the units that you'd like to put an aircraft into. For example, let's say I want to put something here and then go into the editor and you could actually sit in here and do something like this. Uh, I think we're a little too early for the Cessna. Uh, we'll do a 3 37 then. Yeah, do C C3, why not? Boop. And you can see I've actually added that aircraft not only to the airport, but to that specific location in the airport. It's just a slick little trick if you're uh, trying to do some map editing. But anyway, in the event that you do need to do some parasite ops with an airfield, you simply left click on it and you can click on this aircraft button. Or, if you prefer, you can actually go up to Aircraft Operations, 
or if you prefer, you can actually tap the F6 key. It's worth noting that if you're not in the mission editor, you're not going to have this edit hosted aircraft button. So you want to kind of watch out for that particular one. Anyway, I'm going to go ahead and click this real quickly. So when you select the aircraft page, you're going to be listed with all the aircraft that are located at this base. Something you really got to be careful for is you don't want to accidentally select two different airports at the same time, because that's going to lead to a very confusing thing. Basically, the top option is going to give you a general thing about the aircraft. If you left click on it, it's going to bring up specific information about that airplane great tip and of course if you select on one of those like that you can get some details in the b29 and then of course you have a dc3 which just for today's purposes i'm actually going to remove you saw kind of the trick already so if i left click on this little plus here it's going to bring me to a collection of all the different aircraft as well as what their loadout is what their around uh, ready time is with a quick turnaround everything along those lines if i want to select the loadout for an aircraft i simply left click on it or alternatively left click on it and then shift and then left click on the last one you want to load out so you can load up more than one at a time and then you come down to here where it says ready slash arm you can also actually right click this and say ready slash arm if you prefer so this brings out all the possible loadouts that this particular aircraft is capable of carrying keep in mind depending on what generation of the aircraft what service the aircraft is this is going to change there's another thing i want to point out as well these two buttons by the way do not exist normally and that's the fact that some of these loadouts are going to be set up like this, where they are not in italics. Some of them are going to be in italics. If they are in italics, it means that this particular airbase's magazine does not have enough ammunition, as you can see very clearly down here, to support that loadout. As a matter of fact, if you take a look at these columns here, it'll actually tell you how many loadouts of this particular style this particular airport can support at this time. Now, fortunately or unfortunately, our magazines are only capable of sending us with 40 groups of four sidewinders. Doing the map real quick, I should say 50 groups of four sidewinders. Doing the math very quickly, you realize there's 200 sidewinders at this base. Another really slick trick is if you click this little button at the top, it'll only list your usable loadouts. So in this particular case, I can see I have loadouts or I have Mark 117 general purpose bombs. As you move to the right of your loadout, there's a couple extra details you're gonna notice. You'll notice one for quick turnaround, as well as things like what time of day you can use it, what kind of weather you can use it, uh, what type of Winchester shotgun status, and it also gives you general profiles. This is not a guaranteed profile, but it will let you know what kind of calculations are going to limit you to using this particular weapon. Just kind of keep that in the back of your head. But again, I've gone over this in a little bit of detail in previous um, videos as well. So anyway, let's say we're happy with the Sidewinder loadout. I can just come down here and I have two cool options. I have OK Ready, which simply loads over everything seen here, and OK Ready Exclude Optional Weapons. None of these two groups of weapons are considered optional for this loadout, so I won't be able to click this one. It's not going to do anything. Some aircraft will have it set up where your primary loadout is bombs and your optional is sidewinders or something along those lines. You can click this button to skip that. It doesn't make it load faster. It just saves you some weapons. I'm going to click on OK Ready. So now these four aircraft have gone to the yellow status to say that they're being readied. Now it's worth noting that it's going to take three hours to get that loadout ready to use that it can actually launch. The reason this time is so long is for anybody who's ever tried to service an airplane in the military, you'll say this is quick. Another thing worth noting at this point is this option down here, this is Enable Quick. What this does is this allows you to set the aircraft up so that your ground crews are ready to quickly rearm and refuel that particular aircraft. So I'm going to grab the ones I selected, click Enable Quick, and of course you can select the status here. Something worth noting though when you're doing quick turnaround options, and you want to kind of be very careful with this, there is a limit to how many sorties you can fly with a quick one, and there's also going to be limits how many hours. So you can't fly for 3 hours and 59 minutes, lands, quick Quickly reload and do it again. You only have a four hour limit and you only have a total of two sorties, which you have to watch out for. As soon as this thing takes off, that's one of its sorties, whether or not it even went anywhere. So kind of keep that in the back of your mind. So I'm going to go ahead and scroll down here and we're going to take a look at my B-29s. You'll notice these B-29s have already been fully loaded and they're ready to rock. They're green, meaning we can launch them at any given time. Now the cool thing here is this is handled the same way as ships. You simply select the units you want to launch. Again, I'm loading a shift click so I can pick a bunch of them at one time. You can actually do the uh, control click method if you want to do something like this as well. It's completely up to you how you want to launch your aircraft. You can also, of course, grab a chunk of them. And then we have the choice to launch individually or launch as groups. You can also assign them to missions, but you don't have control of this if you're not in the scenario editor. And of course, we can abort the launch as well. So for example, if I click Launch as Group, 
Go ahead and zoom in a little bit. This is kind of neat. I'm going to advance time a little bit here. I don't want to go too fast because if I go too fast, I'm accidentally going to go zipping by. So now the B-29s are started up, and you can actually see that they're making their way to the runway itself. So I'm actually going to pause here, open them back up, and say, oh, I didn't mean to do that. Select them all again and click on Abort Launch. So now they're going to go ahead and return back to the taxi point. Now, when you do missions in Command, this is kind of a fun trick. You'll notice that if I were to create a fake mission here, a uh, fake mission... You'll notice that when you do flight size, you're limited to six aircraft per flight size. So let me show you a fun trick. You can actually go back to that airport. Let's go grab our B-29s again. I'm going to select all of them, assign them to that mission, and then you can launch the entire group of 24 aircraft at the same time. Or if you click this button, you're going to make yourself insane. So all these aircraft, as soon as they get in the air, will go on the mission. Obviously, keep in mind it's a fake mission as a massive group of 24 airplanes, which is an awesome trick if you're trying to concentrate firepower for some of those earlier engagements. You know, you've read about Alpha Strikes where it's like 14 A4s or something like that. You can do that and basically bypass that restriction. One thing you want to watch out for, though, is this button down here, Enforce Flight Size by Base, the Aircraft to Type and Loadout. Otherwise, it's going to give you some trouble with that. So that's the basics. One thing you want to watch out for, too, is uh, some missions have what they call a sustained air operations tempo. That is going to drastically slow down how long it's going to take to arm something. So let me actually go over to my LHA real quickly. So for example, I have my little group of uh, AH-1Js here. If I hit ready arm, and I scoot it down to, let's say, oh, I'm going to load these toes and these FRs as well. I'm going to click OK, ready. Uh-oh. Oh no, I didn't have enough ammunition for all of them. That's okay though. It's going to load the ones they can. You'll notice the time to ready is 20 hours, which again, that ready time is also including refueling the plane, repairing the plane, doing maintenance on the plane. There's a lot to it. Keep in mind in a normal mission, you're not going to have control over whether or not you're sustained or your surge, so you want to plan carefully. It is worth noting though that regardless of all that, if I go back to my F100s real fast, you'll see they still have a time to ready of what they were before we switched modes. There's actually some missions I played where you get a surge in the morning and then a sustain for the rest of the campaign. So you want to watch out for that. Obviously these buttons set time to ready and rename and remove are not available. All right, one last thing I want to point out before I uh, let you guys go here now that you have a general idea how to use that. And that's if you go up to editor, uh, if this were in the editor, and you go under Scenario Features, there's actually this neat option called Unlimited Magazines at Air Naval Bases. If this is checked, watch what happens when I go to arm this group of F-100s. I have everything. And you'll also notice that my number available is also unlimited. So if I wanted to do something really silly, I could go back to my B-29s, I could do ready arm, and I said, nuclear bombs for everybody. Of course, like I said, you won't have that. So now we have an unlimited supply of anything. Scenario designers, take note, that could be very, very dangerous because people will load up on JDAMs and uh, ruin all the fun that you would have had otherwise. All right, hopefully this video is helpful. Like I said, I meant to do this one a little while ago to basically provide everybody with that little piece that they're going to need to know as far as you know how to use ships and how to use airplanes and launch them from bases. It's worth noting that the moment that aircraft leaves the ground, that sortie is considered activated, which means it can't just land in two seconds and be ready to go. It's going to take the full 20 hours or the full six or the full three hours in order to rearm that particular aircraft, even though all you're doing is basically putting $5 worth of gas into a kind of a thing. So you got to be careful with that. If you don't need to launch, don't launch. Or if you do launch, have refueling assets in place to keep those aircraft basically stuck in the sky forever. One other thing, now that I think about it, watch out for this where it says fuel state. And also watch out for this where it says loadout setting. Because what will happen is you'll get an intercept mission. They'll fire one missile and then return to base and then take six hours to rearm. You can disable that by basically selecting something like this or manually controlling them at the end. As usual, if you have any questions, feel free to toss them into the comment. Again, I was trying to keep this relatively simple as a follow-up to that initial set of tutorial videos. Enjoy.